So far we have been using arrays to store a list of items of the same data type. But one major drawback of an array is that the size of an array is fixed, meaning you can't add, insert or remove items once it is created. And that is where we have lists. A list is a type of collection that lets you store objects of the same data type just like arrays, but it will let you add, remove or insert items. And UiPath has specific activities for these. So let's see how to work with lists. In order to create a list, go to the variables tab and click create variable. I'll name it as first names. For the variable type, I'll click browse for types. And if I scroll down, you should see MS Corelib, which stands for Microsoft Common Object Runtime Library. And inside that, you will see system.collections.generic. And if you expand that, you'll see list, dictionary, and other data structures. So I'll select list, and just like an array, you need to select the data type. Since we are creating a list of first names, I'll select string and click OK. Now let's add a few names here. And I get a warning which says, value of type one dimensional array of string cannot be converted to system.collections.generic.list of string. So basically you can't type the values just like you type for an array. You will have to use a slightly different syntax. And it goes like this, new space list of string space from, followed by the list of names we have here. Next we will create another list called full names. And this time I'm not going to type the names here. Instead, we will populate it programmatically with the last name Smith. But we still need to instantiate this list, meaning we need to create a new instance of this list in the memory. And we do that by typing new list of string. And that is it. If we don't do this, it means we have simply declared the list variable, but we haven't instantiated it. So when we try to add an item to this list, you will get an error. Next, I'll add a for each loop. And I'll change this to name, type first names, and set the type argument to string. Now, in order to add items to a list, we have an activity called add to collection. And you can find it under system, activities, statements. And here it is. You can also see other activities like clear collection and uh, remove from collection. So I'll drag and drop add to collection. In the collection name, I'll type full names and I'll change the type argument to string because full names is a list of string and not a list of objects. And in the item, I'll type name plus space smith within double quotes. Now let's print all the names in the full names list in the output panel. We can use the for each activity to do that like we did with arrays. But this time let's try a different way. We'll use the string.join method. This method will concatenate the elements of an array or a collection using a separator that we specify. I'll add a right line activity and type string.join. And if I open parenthesis, it asks for a separator. So I'll type semicolon space within double quotes, comma, and specify the name of the list, which is full names. That is it. Now if I just run the process, you can see all the full names separated by semicolon and a space. All right, so the string.join method is very handy to work with collections and arrays. Now let's see a few different ways you can work with lists and the associated methods. Just like arrays, you can access a specific element using its index number. So if I add a right line activity and say full names of one and run the process, it printed John Smith, which is the element at index position one. I can also get the number of elements in the list using the count property. However, for an array, if you remember, we used the length property, right? And you can see it printed four. 
Now let's say if I want to check if a specific element exists in this list, I can use the exists in collection activity. So let's say if I want to check if the name John exists in the list first names, I'll type first names here in the collection field and I'll type John within double quotes, change the type argument to string and this activity will return a result of true or false and you want to store that result in a variable. So I'll create a variable called name exists and you can see it automatically set the variable type to boolean. Now let's write the output of this name exists variable. And you can see it printed true. Now let's add the remove from collection activity just before the exists in collection activity. And set the collection to first names, item to John, change the type argument to string and here also you can see a field called result. This is also a boolean which will tell you if the item was removed successfully or not. For example in this case I'm trying to remove John and the result will be true because we do have John in here and it will be removed. But if we try to remove some other name let's say Arun, the result will be false because that name does not exist. So let's create another variable to store this result and I'll call it name removed and add a right line activity and I'll say item removed status is plus name removed dot to string and if I run the process now You can see the item removed status is true and the next one which is basically checking if John exists is false because we already removed John in the previous step. Next we have the index of method which will return the index of a particular element in the list. So let's say if I type first names dot index of James dot to string it should return one because Richard is zero. John will be removed, so obviously James should be 1. Here you go. You can do this with an array as well, but there is a little trick. Let me show you that. I'll create an array called names array. And I'll simply copy paste these four names here. I'll then add a right line activity and if I type names array dot i you can't find the method index of but if I just delete this and type array dot i you can see the method index of here. This is called a static method which is basically a method that can be accessed only using the name of the data type which is array in this case but not from the actual variable name which is names array. The name of the data type is called the class and the variable itself which is created using the class is called an instance. Class is just like a template or a blueprint and you can create as many instances as you like. So basically these methods that are available only from the class names are called static methods. Now if I type the parenthesis I see three arguments array value and stat index and it says one of six here with up and down arrows. So if I keep pressing my down arrow you can see different options for the same method and if you look at the fifth option it asks me only two arguments array and value. But if I go to the first option it asks for array value and stat index. What it means is with option number 5 you just give the name of the array and the value you want to find and it will return the index of the value just like we did previously with string. Or if you choose the first option you get one more argument which is the start index and with this it will start searching for that value only from the start index that you have specified. So let me show you how it works. We'll go with the fifth option for now. I'll type names array, comma, John within double quotes dot to string. 
And now if I run the process, you can see the output is one. Now if I go back and add a comma, set the start index as two, now it'll search only from the index two position, which is James. So this time it will not be able to find John. So let's see what it returns. It says minus one, which means it couldn't find the item. This is called method overloading in programming terminology. It sounds pretty fancy, but all it means is that you have different argument options for the same method depending on your requirement. I don't want to really bore you too much with programming terminologies and concepts, but these are very important to know because when you try to Google something or search on support forums like Stack Overflow, it'll be super handy when you know the right terminologies. One question you might have in your mind is, why do we even need arrays if we can do everything with the list that an array can do, plus additional things like removing, adding, etc. Well, an array is more efficient in terms of its performance when compared to a list because of the way the memory is allocated for an array. I don't want to get too much into the details, but what you need to remember is that if you know that the size of your collection is going to be fixed, then definitely use an array. But if you want your collection to be dynamic, meaning you want to add or remove items, then use a list. All right, in the next video, we will discuss another important collection called dictionaries.